something cruel that I did to you, which was assign you the body ritual among the Naki Rama without telling you anything about it and just said, hey, go off and here's a very famous study and you're going to you're going to do something and diagnose these people. And sometimes I many times in anthropology and many anthropologists do this cruelty at the very beginning of the course. Actually, has anybody, was anybody ever exposed to this article before this class? Some people read it in different classes, like history or something. Um, I put up here that you should, I should pronounce it as Naki Rama, because when I started putting, getting uh, YouTube subtitles, uh, that were auto-generated, and I was pronouncing as Nazi Rama. It translated as the Nazi Rama, which was not what I wanted to have happen. Although, considering where our politics are going, who knows? Maybe I should just go for it. But um, yeah, we'll go with Nazi Rama people. Um, so uh, you know, you you can write a very good essay on this without ever. Getting it, I guess, is the right way to put it. I don't, but um, yeah, it really is a, meant to be about the American people. And maybe is that, was that the tip off for you? The Nakasaw? <laughs> Which is really is Washington throwing something across the Potomac and chopping down the cherry tree. Uh, there's so there's a few tip offs like where they are geographically and they have a highly developed market economy and there's Washington and and yeah so this is supposed to be the United States as described Americans in the 1950s right so there's the Naki Rama and there's you know minor as if he's the anthropologist studying the U.S. Americans so you have those shrines which are of course just our bathroom rituals and those uh, men scraping their faces with which are just it's just shaving and not uh, the toothbrushes made of hogs hairs which may seem weird to us but actually that's what's a common toothbrush material back in the day so uh Holy mouth man, of course, that sadistic person who's always prodding your teeth and you keep going back and your teeth just keep decaying and they keep giving you new stuff. Boy, they gave me the special teeth whitening stuff they keep talking to me about. Now I need my teeth to be whiter, so now I have to use baking soda. We're doing the thing. So, of course, that's our dentist. Um Hard to find a dentist these days, but the hygienists do the job. Um, let's see. Ah, the Latipso, of course, is the hospital. Alex, you were so close. You were like, oh boy, it's so similar between how they're charging people all this money to go to this place, and we do that too. So it was, it was, it was getting there. You're almost there. This one might confuse some people. Baking heads in ovens. What was that? Is that doing your hair? Yes, it is. It's those 1950s hair salons. You know those pictures of the people with the bubbles that come over their head and they get all hot, the hair dryers? That's what that was. It's, uh, yeah. Today, I mean, I, I, one student was like, wow, can you imagine if, Minor is doing something where people bake their whole bodies and <laughs> try to change their change their skin tone. What a ridiculous practice that would be. Uh, so that was that. This is another one that that is maybe perhaps uh, doesn't seem so. You know, this person who's a listener and you go in and tell them all your problems and it all goes back to your mom and. Yeah, that was that was like classic psychoanalysis, right? Where you know, the the idea that your everything happened during 
potty training. <laughs> it could all be it's a, just this sort of misogynistic ritual and Freudian psychoanalysis that we used to go through. Now <laughs> you just go in and get the get the stuff and you know fix it up. Um, so you don't have to go to all this huge therapeutic sessions. What's interesting about the 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 medications and and I mean I'm not uh, many of we we all need balance. We all need therapy. We all need balance in our lives. It's interesting is that back in the day, if you so there's been a lot of experiments with placebos, right? So is is a medication effective? Is it more effective than just giving somebody a sugar pill? And in the 1970s, if you gave somebody a sugar pill, a placebo, and said this will cure your problems, your mental issues, you'll be less depressed. It didn't work. <laughs> People were like, no, nah, it didn't work. Now, actually, placebos in some cases are working better because we have a belief, a belief that it will work. So um, our belief that something will work has a lot to do with whether it will work. Not always, but a lot. And then, of course, the wonderful phrase about how you know, women who go around to different towns and have hypermammary development and the natives will stare at them for a fee, which I think, I don't know if you can still do this in Oneonta, but uh, we used to be able to down, down the way. And I probably shouldn't say this, but one of you, one one of you in an essay said, "Well, if my if my persuasive techniques don't work, I can just pay some <laughs> large-breasted females to give them COVID information." And I started to think, maybe we should have tried that. That's not a bad idea. Why didn't we do that? That's smart. Um, Fauci just didn't wasn't. And have the stock. So, uh, the, yeah, it's meant to be about us. So, it's it was this article was published in 1956, and it's the most read, most downloaded article from American anthropologists, which was the professional journal ever. Um, you know, I think that Miner was in some ways slightly prophetic and that the, the things that how you believe and if a doctor says it you know what you'll do if somebody in a in a white coat tells you to do it um or kind of changing on this perhaps but that seems to be true he also understood something about you know these sort of body form ideals and he called them theme the ideal body form is virtually outside the range of human variation, which was literally true if you looked at the development of the Barbie doll during that time. And if you put the Barbie doll up to real size, it couldn't fit the normal reproductive organs that you would need to have to just be alive. So in fact, the ideal, if, if that was actually an ideal, was, wasn't, wasn't possible for humans to achieve. These days, I think that this is even extended into the idea of the, you know, the perfect abs and the six pack. And so men too are very much exposed to these kinds of ideals as well. The, the reason I actually started assigning this as kind of a, uh, hey, what would they what would they do about COVID? Is just because all the things that we started injecting into ourselves and taking instead of the things we were supposed to take, and uh, you know we are a magic ridden people. It's hard to understand how we've managed to exist so long under the burdens which we've imposed upon ourselves. Now, I was kind of afraid about all of this. And then, as many of you noted, does do Americans have a fascination with the mouth? Does that help us? <laughs> does that would that help us mask? I think obviously not, right? That's why we can't mask. No mask, no mask, man. It's too 
too much. We cannot do that. So, yeah. So what's the big point, Christine? What are we supposed to get out of this? <laughs> No, the whole thing. Or was terms that way just as strange or taboo that could be tied to yeah, I think that that's been the way it's been used. And, you know, I think that's a that's a great point, right? That we're going to to uh, to speak against the the ethnocentrism that you we usually have and try to develop a more culturally relative perspective. There's a it's hard to say what Miner himself was trying to do. He he really he didn't seem to intend this for a popular audience. Usually you don't publish something in American Anthropologist if that's what you're intending to do. It seemed to maybe to be aimed more at at anthropologists. Cass, what do you think his possible point was if he's aiming at an anthropologist? Well, maybe written is to narrow that American people can be called I thought it was a good commentary on the ethnography design and the way we kind of like to socialize that other people other cultures. Um, I thought it was like a commentary on ethnography as a whole and trying to point out movements that are going to study people and help people understand them. So acts like, hey, people are super weird. Every single thing is people are really dumb and stupid and nothing else really makes sense. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that this is kind of a point that's been been lost and and it's like i said it's hard to say what did, what he really but it may have been actually it meant as a scathing critique of the kind of anthropology that was that was being produced around that time that would make people seem dumb or exotic or or other um so and, and maybe that's what he meant so maybe when i'm when I get upset with minor, which I will in a second, I should remember that maybe that's what he intended it to be. If so, he, he perhaps disguised it a little too cleverly, but uh, it, it's good. There's a good, uh, if you Google who are the Naki Rama on YouTube, there's a, a fun little video, I think, made by some students about it. But uh, one of the YouTube comments, which I love, is uh, <laughs> you know this person who's looking for the information about the tribe and still doesn't get that it's not uh, that it's not this doesn't work. Um, and I don't, you know, I, I I actually don't. I think it's a failure more of anthropology than of uh, that this because in some ways we keep perpetuating the stereotype that that's what anthropology is about are these weird people out there. So, um, I, you know, I think that there are some huge issues with the Naki Rainbow. It's, you know, it flips over the us and the them, but it doesn't at all portray how much societies have been interconnected over time. Particularly uncool is how it uses at a time when people were appropriating all kinds of indigenous American uh, regalia and uh, mascots. Uh, it appropriates for it, you know, mainstream American culture all the things that uh, the things that the U.S. we tried to eliminate from, from uh, our society. And of course it, and, and this could be a a, what Miner was trying to critique, this idea that there were everybody was the same, homogeneous and frozen in time. And so, um, you know, the general problem, I think, is that, is that you know, we, we're, we're weird to them, they're weird to us. It's 
usually there's some inter there there's often an interconnection there's usually a power and inequality dynamic within and between societies and so i think all of these issues are things that extend to the classic anthropology that we read in the last unit from laura bohannon to uh the Kalahari article, uh, even to an extent of the merit of small, our babies ourselves, is simply to say our, uh, that, you know, we are weird to them, they're weird to us, we should all just kind of celebrate our differences, uh, doesn't get into these issues of, of, of power interconnection uh, and inequality, which we see 